Hi, Dave and Tim here at Single Malt Review, and today sees us returning to Cuba. Mmm, rum time. Mm. Last year we looked at Havana Club Añejo Especial. Today it's another Havana Club, but it's also a channel first. It is a white rum. Yeah, it's a bit of a bit of a space odyssey here. Mm -hmm. It's um, not completely clear. If you look here, it's got this slightly, I don't know, insipid, or even colour. It's mm -hmm. a very, very light rum, and that's because it's actually three years old, yeah. making it older than a lot of dark rums in the same sort of price, you know, lower, lower tier shelf bracket. Um, this is one of the curious examples of a spirit that is purified after aging. Yes. And that's a very, very odd practice. So it ages mm. like normal rum, to the best of my knowledge anyway, and then it is purified, I suspect, with charcoal yep. filtration or something very similar, to strip the colour and some of the built-up accumulated yeah. flavour back out of the drink. It is an age statement rum, three years, yeah. probably at 40% ABV. And why would you, why on earth would you do that, might mm. you ask? You know, um, black rum, that's easy to make. You make rum and then you <laughs> bottle it. Um, and that's that's true, it is very easy to make. But this is, what you get from this is something yeah. quite unique. Because if you reach for, let's just say, for the sake of the experiment, um, Mount Gay Eclipse <laughs> blank rum, which is totally unaged, completely clear, um, distill it, bottle it, away you go, boom. Um, fine for what it does, but it's very, you know, you, you can tell that this is an unaged spirit. Mm. It tastes of the sort of rummy, sugar cane nature and nothing else. This one has layers. This one yeah. goes deep. Even <sighs> of a nose, there is, there's a touch of molasses, there is sugar syrup. Yeah, so these, mm. these things we would expect, because these are spirit-driven, spirit-born yeah. things. They, uh, all the sugar cane stuff, that's, that's in your rum mm. from birth. But, but it's not that bite of raw alcohol yet on a new make white rum. Yeah, it's super smooth and there's mm. a lot of vanilla and a lot of coconut there in this is, one. Yes, coconut, coconut ice. That and even a little conviction. bit of like coconut mm. water, you know, like yep. the inside, the liquidy part of a coconut. And wood. There mm. is wood character coming through. It's subtle, but it's there and it is a key difference. And so this is odd. It's a white rum which has a certain, it's got a sippability factor, oh, I mean, yeah. as we will demonstrate very very shortly it's perfectly good on its own mm. but i think in terms of you know daiquiri for daiquiri um, which is how i typically ingest my um unaged or blank uh, white rums um this gives you a drink with so many more layers to it than you would normally get from a bog standard unaged rum that you yeah it really is a cut above so we'll um we'll get this on the buds and see what it's got There is mellow oakiness there, strong sweetness of brown sugar and white sugar, but also something a little different. There is some uh, sappy, woody sweetness. There is a lot of, mm. um, there is a lot of, yeah, oaky, 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 oaky smoke even. vanilla mm. stuff here. And the wood involved uh, these days, it's almost definitely just American um, ex-bourbon mm -hmm. barrels now that they now get the trade direct. Is liberalized. Um, yeah. I suspect previously they would have been the same, only mm. third hand as opposed to second hand. Mm. Um, way, way, way back in the day when the um, the Spanish connection to Cuba was stronger than it is today, that would have been sherry, presumably sherry mm. and um, brandy barrels that they aged rum in. It would have been a whole different animal. I think those are those are long out of circulation now, but Still very, very interesting yeah. kind of thing. And there are so few examples of this. There is, I mean, there's, you can have a shopping list full of <laughs> um, unaged rums, completely clear rums. Yeah. Easy to get, easy to afford. Um, this one, I don't think I'd be wrong in calling it completely unique because I know there are some other aged white rums out there, but there are not a great many. And it is... It really is a hell of a lot. It's a huge step up considering the <laughs> price... Is a very small step. This up is a from, this is a truly you know, bargain rum bus. You can get this on an episode premium. It is extremely affordable. This sort of this runs. I mean, you probably what you're sacrificing is the extra um, 300 mil mm. because it's it is a very similar price to the absolute cheapest rums. Mm. Um, it just doesn't come in a 
come in a litre. Um, but also, they don't skimp you on the um, ABV. This is 40% mm. eighty proof. Yeah. Um, whereas you'll find a lot of real cheap rums, they'll be squeaking in their 37.5 nonsense underproof strengths mm. um, that really you just don't want to be wasting your time with. So um, good, good to see a proper, proper ABV on this one yeah. as well. Yeah, this one, it's not, you know, we don't want to talk about this like it's massively complex. You could not write a multi-page book about this rum, <laughs> but it's, compared to a normal unaged rum, there is so much more going on here. Just the fact that we can talk about it yeah. um, kind of kind of illustrates the difference. There is, yeah, there is stuff to talk about here. God, mm. you almost, I associate this so strongly with daiquiris that... As I, as I know it here, I can, no, I, can, I can smell the limes mm -hmm. coming out of this. It's like they're just mm. manifesting in there. They're so intrinsically linked in my, in my brain. But mm. anyway, um, scores, scores for this guy. Yeah. Um, keep in mind this is against other rums, and if you've been really clinical, mm. other um, unaged rums. Although, well, where, would you, where would you even put it? It is an aged rum. It's an aged rum, but it's but also it's a white rum. presenting is, as a white yeah. rum. So it is the first of its kind on the show. Hell, just, the just compare it to other, to other rums, yeah. I suppose. Um, this one is a pretty effortless 88 mm. from me, and far and away, far and away the best um, white rum mm. that I know of. Um, that I that is in my sphere of purchasing. Right. Um, this is definitely the gold standard of um, I want my cocktails mm. to taste even better. This is what I will reach reach for. I know that um, Ray and Nephew, I think that's how you pronounce that, mm. they produce a white rum, uh, which I know is very, very good, but that is, again, um, completely unaged. It's not this weird backwards aging that this one does, but um, I know that one is rateable, mm. but it's very, very hard to find. Um, brought to you by the same people, I think, that uh, made the... Oh, what was that incredibly strong gunpowder rum jolly thing? <laughs> the was it plantation over? It? No, no, I think it was. I think it was actually called Ray and Nephew. Um, one of our very very first. We're wearing silly hats. We're outside. Oh. You can look it up. It's I don't Smith know. and Cross. I think. Yeah, Smith and Cross. Smith and Cross. Yeah, um, same distillery that brings <laughs> us this one, which is now apparently sadly discontinued. But oh, it was too mm. beautiful a thing to to last. Mm. But as for me, I would give this one a solid eighty-two. Mm. It's an enjoyable rum on its own or it mixes very readily in all kinds of forms. It is wonderfully accessible as well. It won't hurt your wallet and it is easy to approach. Yeah. It isn't a, uh, languishing in a veil of complexity and richness like a very old dark rum, but in, it's not trying to be either. It is a white rum and it does being a white rum very well. Yeah. Well, I say um, your, your homework uh, later, later in the year when affordable um, limes come back around mm. when you're not paying more for your limes by weight than you are for your spirit because mm -hmm. it can actually get that bad yep. um, this far south in the southern hemisphere we rely on um, external sources mm. for limes um, right up until we don't and then they become mm -hmm. cheap as jolly chips but hey uh, yes your your homework is to um, experience the daiquiri right. with this um, with this run because man it will blow your nuts off it's that good uh, we have lime cordial and lime syrup mm, at home so we can try well, no? yeah no you you don't fresh lime mm -hmm. fresh lime and lime cordial oh, i can't it's say cordial made with like, it is lime juice it is but there's a there's certain yeah. there's a there's a glimmer there's a snap there's it's, a panache to yeah, fresh limes which cannot sure. it's like strawberries and strawberry jam you know yeah. they're, they're, they're two different things mm -hmm. um, you cannot beat fresh lime juice yeah. and anyone anyone down the hole in the cocktails will know mm. that you just there's something that can't be replicated, um, something that just cannot cannot be bottled. So, mm. with that, we we'll move on to something else, um, quite possibly bottled. It could almost be time for could it be time for something peated? Oh, could mm. be. Maybe, maybe. Yes. Don't hold me to it. We'll see. Slanger, we'll be right back.